everybody, welcome back to our second live session on Facebook. Last time we spoke generally about all the illnesses and diseases affecting the kids age group, which is the pediatric population, because all the children are back to school and we wanted to give a gendered introduction to the parents. So today we've chosen a topic of respiratory illnesses and we are going to give you a general um, entry into it and also basically talk about all of the respiratory illnesses that your kids can face. So we're going to try and keep it short and interesting so that we can do this very quickly. Okay, so the most important thing before we begin, we want to say a big thank you to everybody who saw our last video. That was really, really nice of everybody to take the time to watch our video and also comment and let us know what you thought about the video. So we want to say from me and my entire team a big thank you so much to everybody. So moving on today, uh, Sedu, we, are, we thought we would discuss about respiratory illnesses. So what was the findings that you saw when you went for medical camps on respiratory diseases? Well, so respiratory tract infections are one of the most common infections that students are presenting with today. And uh, I think uh, this is time for everybody to understand and educate the students about these infections. It's the cause of these infections are multifactorial. Uh, often the most common cause of these respiratory tract infections are virus. However, the bacteria also can cause this infection. So the students usually present with running nose, dry cough or protective cough, cold and fever and headache. So with uh, these symptoms, uh, what we call as is basically respiratory tract infections and um, the mainstay of uh, the treatment uh, for these infections are a supportive care usually yes. like you know so, steam inhalations yeah. and so moving into this we were talking about the symptoms of respiratory yes. infections the thing to remember about respiratory infections is that usually when we classify it we divide it into two so we say there is something called an upper respiratory First. tract infection and a lower First. respiratory First. tract infection so an upper respiratory tract infection is usually something which affects your nose it goes into your sinuses and then it goes through the mouth through the throat so that's where it is the second thing, which is the lower respiratory tract infection, usually affects the bronchial tubes and your lungs. In kids especially, yep. we see a lot of upper respiratory tract infections, which can go on to lower respiratory tract infections. So what we want to make you understand today is mostly about upper respiratory tract infections affecting these children. All right? So yes. like you said, the symptoms are running nose, which I think almost all the parents see on an everyday basis in your children, especially when they start school. So running nose is very common. The second one would be cough. So when you see a child presenting with cough and especially if the cough has sputum in it, a lot of sputum and you see different colors in the sputum ranging from yellow to a bit darker yellow or orangish or sometimes even red, uh, you, would, you should uh, especially then take your child to a healthcare profession. So cough is one of the most major things. It can be productive and non-productive which basically means it can have sputum and it can also not have sputum. All right? Now the third thing would be something like a bees. Please. Bees is also very important because what is bees? It's basically a very high pitched noise which comes especially when your child exhales. So when breathing in and breathing out, when the child is breathing out and you hear a very high pitched noise, you should be alarmed by that and you should want to take your child to a doctor. So there's running nose, cough, bees and you have fevers and cold. Fever is very important especially because a fever with a respiratory tract illness would be an alarm sign for you. Fever usually ranging between 36.1 to 37.2 degrees Celsius is normal. That is the normal temperature. But anything above 30 degrees Celsius or as we say anything above 100 degrees Fahrenheit would be something that you should consider alarming and then you should definitely bring your child to a healthcare professional. So that's very important. Cold and sinusitis usually accompanies with running nose. Uh, the child feels very breathless. They're taking a lot of deep breaths and that is an, another alarming sign. Right? So when the child is taking deep breaths or is very breathless, like for example when the child is lying down and suddenly they are unable to breathe and they suddenly wake up and they say they are not able to lie down properly and breathe, that is also an alarming sign, so taking very fast breaths. With respiratory illnesses, the most important thing that you should also worry about is the activity of your child. If your child is very lethargic, if the child is not performing a lot of usual activities like running around, playing with friends or talking to you, playing with you, or even not able to talk to you properly, that is an alarming sign. Reduced activity in any count, apart from normal behavior of the child, if the child is having any reduced activity, for example, like we spoke, not talking to you properly, not eating properly, not taking seeds properly, not being very energetic or running around the house or doing normal things that your child usually does every day, that should be something that should concern you and then you should try definitely bringing your child to a healthcare professional, a pediatrician, or a general physician next to you. 
right? So these are some of the symptoms that symptoms that you can observe as a parent for your child, especially regarding respiratory tract illness. All right. So moving into this, this was the symptoms that we covered. What is the main causes of respiratory tract illness? Uh, it's a multifactorial cause. Virus is being the most common, and it's environmental. And due to water, it can be due to uh, pollution. It can also it's a surface that we use and people don't wash their hand properly and uh, and uh, also due to you know if there is an infected person around you who is sneezing a lot and you you know you tend to inhale these droplets you are at risk of developing these infections and um, smokers are also at risk of developing these infections yeah. and asthmatic individuals children with asthma or COPD any form of low risk tract infections are at risk of developing acute infections yeah. very often. So these are the risk factors that you usually notice in children. The first thing being that since especially in a school environment all the kids are exposed to each other's germs they tend to catch a respiratory tract illness. Most of the time it is not too serious but in times when you notice a fever or reduced activity or the child is not be is breathless then you should consider going and seeking help. But like you said any surfaces have germs so anywhere in your school anywhere in the playground the second thing to notice is if they are exposed to pollution, smoking, uh, individuals, you know, and all of this will affect their lungs because they have very, very, uh, yep, yep, you know, yep. very developing lungs. So you have to understand that all of this can affect your child's lungs and they can develop an infection. So pollution, um, exposed to smoke, smoke of anything, smog of any kind, uh, you know, all of this should be kept in mind uh, for for your children. All right, so. The most important thing to remember is I think the causes, which is that usually it is a virus and it is, in, in case of a viral infection, it will go in 3 to 5 days. But if it's a bacterial infection, the symptoms will stay and they will persist. So you know in after a week or maybe after two weeks, if the infection is still there. If the, if the infection is still there, basically means that your child will still have a fever, will still have cough, will still have very reduced activity, will not be taking any fluids, any food. Then in those cases, you know that may be something a bit more serious and then that is when you should definitely approach a clinic or a hospital like doctors to check out what the child is suffering from, alright? So this is the symptoms, symptoms. signs, everything that we have covered, the risk factors for kids developing respiratory illnesses. What is the management, like what is the major steps to take for kids? The management of respiratory tract infections are usually depends on the etiology of the infections. If it is a viral infection, it is often supportive care which means that you use nasal decongestion or uh, yeah. steam inhalations, warm water with salt goggling may yes. be helpful. If the symptoms are more than two days, then please go to a doctor and make sure that it is not uh, a bacterial infection. So the difference between bacterial and viral infections, bacteria do causes high grade fever and the symptoms yeah. are, are severe than the viral infections. Viral infections are tend to cause minimal symptoms like nose blocks, nasal congestion, dry cough. If it is a bacterial, the symptoms will be usually much more severe than the viral infection. So fever are the typical features to distinguish from a bacterial and viral infection. Yeah. So the point to remember is also that if it's a viral respiratory infection, you do not need an antibiotic. Antibiotic is basically there to target bacterial infections. So that's also one one thing that you have to keep in mind. For viral infections, it's almost always supportive care, which is you know as my colleague yeah, yeah. said, it will be nasal decongestions. The steaming is very very good for the child. So any you know steaming vaporization has to be done for the child, and also good healthy food and fluids. A lot of fluids. Giving them good warm fluids consistently will also help them come back to you know healthy behaviors yep. faster. So all these should be kept in mind when management for the kids. Now, what I really want to talk about before this is precaution. When, how can we avoid getting respiratory illnesses? You cannot uh, avoid someone coughing on you or you cannot avoid not going in pollution today. So, what are the steps that you as parents or you as a child can take for yourself? The first thing is wash your hands. Hand washing is the most important technique that we can give you. It's the easiest thing to do and it must definitely be done. Now, when should hand washing be done? After consumption of food, after you use the toilet or restrooms, after you go for playing, you know, you play in the playground or you come back from school, as soon as you do all of those, those activities, especially the extracurricular activities, you need to wash your hands, alright? If you, the point to remember is that germs go from hand to hand. So, this hand touching another door surface and you touching that door surface, all of this is where the germs are there, okay? So, please understand that hand washing is critical and very crucial, alright? Uh, we will put a link down below by WHO 
which has the hand washing steps and techniques, the proper techniques. So you can learn it and you can also train your child and if you do this, we can at least make sure that you are somehow resisting, you know, respiratory infections. Right. The second thing is to wear a mask if you can, especially in the pollution, especially in smoke or smog, wear a pollution mask. Yes, that is very important and that will also help reduce the respiratory infection uh, spread. The, sec the third most important thing is, if you have a respiratory illness and you cough, please don't cough just in the environment and in open air. Cough into a handkerchief, right, or cough into your sleeve if you can't find a handkerchief at that moment. This will at least reduce the amount of germs contaminating the air around you. Alright, so these three are very important precautionary measures that you can take. Wash your hands, make sure you get a pollution mask and when you, if you are suffering from respiratory illness, Please don't go to school, alright? And, and the most important thing is don't cough in open air. Okay, so this way it will not spread to the people around you. This is also for adults, you know, so to yep. make sure that kids and adults around each other don't spread respiratory illnesses very easily. Right? Um, and the complications of... Yeah. So what are the complications of respiratory illnesses? What are the other organs or the other systems which can affect, get affected? Especially if you have a low respiratory tract infection like pneumonia or asthma then what could be the complications for this? Well, the bacterial etiologies, if the infections are due to bacteria, antibiotics are the mainstay of treatment and we found that many individuals with antibiotics, streptococcus, staphylococcus, strep pneumonia, klebsiella with such bacteria and it, it proliferates, the bacterial proliferation happens so faster in a way that it, the bacteria can affect your systemic uh, infections like meningitis and it can go to your heart and causes endocarditis after yeah. a few days it can even go to your kidney and affect uh, glomerulonephritis so with uh, children with these infections should go to a doctor and make sure that what is causing these symptoms and if it's a virus the supportive care is the main uh, important and if it's really useful and uh, the other complications of these infections like uh, as i said endocarditis glomerulonephritis but please go to a doctor and make sure that these infections are are being taken care of by a healthcare provider. Don't ignore these symptoms. Yeah, don't ignore the very alarming symptoms. Basically. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, so that's our wrap for the respiratory illnesses, and we'll keep you posted again for our next video. Thank you so much.